Um, Mayor uh, Michael Hancock on the phone with us. Mayor, this is Karen Lee, CBS4 here. Thanks for being with us tonight. Hi, Karen. Hi, Mayor. Jim, Jim Benjamin as well. Uh, Mayor, hey, did, uh, good to talk to you, sir. Um, in, your, uh, in your gut, uh, were you expecting a, a repeat of last night? Because that's certainly what we seem to be witnessing. Yeah, Jim, we certainly can hope not. So we actually experienced today, earlier today, two peaceful and successful uh, demonstrations that really honored uh, the city and themselves and each other. Uh, in a demonstration, we heard them, we saw them, um, and we appreciate uh, uh, their demonstration. This year is not something that uh, we certainly had uh, had in mind and certainly had hoped we would uh, be able to avoid tonight. Mayor, can you give us an idea? As we're watching all of this and we were just having this conversation, um, I'm sure uh, the police department has a plan for how to get everyone off the streets. Can you share a little bit of that with us on to how, how long this could possibly go on and how, you, how the city plans on um, getting this to end? Well, you know, obviously, if I had a bullhorn and I could talk to everybody, I would tell them to go right. home. Um, for their own safety, for the safety of everyone else, and for the safety of our law enforcement, go home. There's nothing being accomplished here. It, I'm, I'm watching, you know, just as we're talking, it looks like the officers are trying to move them uh, eastbound out of the area. Um, and hopefully, as they get away from downtown, they will uh, go ahead and take themselves home for, for everyone's safety. But, uh, you know, I, you know, the officers... Uh, did uh, as we had asked them to do, and that was to man the perimeter of the demonstrations. They did it all day long, um, a lot of resources dedicated to it. Uh, and then tonight, uh, uh, as the night drew near, um, uh, it, it, you can see the change over in the crowd. And people brought uh, weapons, they brought uh, things to hurl at the officers uh, flashbang bottles, rocks. The police uh, confiscated two guns. Um, and it became again um, a, a, an insightful, uh, an incited uh, an engagement. You know, uh, Michael, you talked earlier with our Brian Moss, and uh, certainly we're speaking from the heart when you talked what it was like to be uh, a black man and a, uh, a black boy growing up in the Denver metro area. You felt the sting of racism and discrimination. How do you feel the city's doing as we go forward from events like this in trying to uh, in increase understanding, uh, provide more opportunity for people in our minority communities? We know it's a tricky problem with no easy solution, but does this type Type of activity uh, foster a more positive engagement in that regard? You know, Jim, um, racial reconciliation um, and, and, and creating equity uh, in, throughout a community, something that is not a, a, not a sprint, it's going to be, it's a journey, hard work, a lot of people got to pull, push, and control to make it happen. I believe in my heart that the value systems of Denver uh, draw us direction, which is very important. We all have to come. There will always be those, and there are those, um, who are infected with the disease of racism, um, prejudice, um, and won't come no matter what you do because they can't help themselves. It's what they know is who they are and their makeup. Uh, but I believe in my heart that the vast majority of us in this city believe in equity, believe in equality, and believe in working together for the betterment of, of everyone. Um, we know that these peaceful demonstrations have been infiltrated uh, by some groups. Uh, we're going to work to identify them and deal with them effectively. Uh, but I believe we really, that we live in a city that, for the most part, is, is moving in the right direction. And quite frankly, if you look at the demonstrators who are Mark demonstrating peacefully. Yeah. It's a very diverse racial group. I watched true. them today. Yeah, we had a lot of families down there today, Mayor. A lot of uh, young people down there with their families. They yes. felt uh, they felt so important to make sure that that everyone uh, comes together in in this. And it was it was great to see earlier today for sure. Absolutely, I saw it as well. Yeah, you know, Mayor, if you could take us inside the uh, inside the room earlier in the day when you're getting together with Chief Pazin and uh, uh, some of his lieutenants, other public safety people, how do you talk about and how do you how do you strategize to to protect the city, uh, people, and property, knowing that you're going into a night like this? What what's 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 the mission that you're working on? Well, Jim, it, the mission is to keep everyone safe um, and to allow. Uh, demonstrators to exercise their First Amendment right, uh, rights, and, and that that is important to us. Uh, it's really not a very difficult conversation. I want you to 
know that not only am I a native, but Keith Kazin is a native, raised uh, in this city, good uh, born and raised in this city. Many of the leadership of the police department, born and raised in this city. And so there's a, uh, an innate love and passion for the city and the people that call the city home. They want this to go well. And, you know, those officers have been just as impacted by what was uh, witnessed in Minneapolis with the, the um, murder of uh, George Floyd. Um, as you and I were, and, and they, they reacted to it and said, we want people to demonstrate, we want them to do it peacefully, and we will man the perimeter and, and hopefully keep everybody safe. So it's an easy conversation uh, to have, and, and, and quite frankly, if you look at, since I've been mayor, it's the same procedure we have followed, whether it was Occupy Denver, Black Lives Matter, or for whatever demonstration, man the perimeter, keep people safe. As long as everyone demonstrates peacefully, we're, we're all going to be okay. You know, Mayor, as you were talking about just a minute ago, you know, this is um, this obviously gives a, a opens up the door again for um, a more concerted effort and, and more conversation. Is this something that that will happen in the days and the weeks from today? Um, is this now an opportunity to get together with more leaders in our community um, on all walks of life and figure out how to how to tackle this again moving forward? Yeah, we have never allow for these sort of things to happen in our community without sitting down with the community um, to have a constructive conversation. So I absolutely foresee us doing that again. And let me remind everyone, Karen and Jim, that, you know, we, we've had incidents of excessive force here in Denver. We've had people who've lost their lives to the hands of police officers that were questionable. We've had major settlements, as you know. Um, we have, since 2015, 14, 15, undergone a community-based process to um, you know, address the issues of excessive force, uh, coming up with entirely new policies, new training protocols, uh, new uh, uh, discipline matrix, all in which to hold each other accountable and to make sure that we are valuing life and, and, and the dignity of humanity in our community and interaction between our community and police. That all came from lessons learned and the willingness to not only sit down and talk, but to do something about it. Mayor, we so appreciate you being with us tonight and uh, being willing to talk with us here as we continue to watch this happen in, uh, in our city tonight. Mayor Michael Hancock, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Karen and Jim. Take care.